Hello everyone, today I will share with you an interesting case we had in our ICU of methanol intoxication that is associated with ingestion of a hand sanitizer. Our patient is a 27-year-old male with history of mental disorder and suicidal thoughts who presented with confusion, vomiting, blurred vision, and respiratory distress after ingestion of a hand sanitizer product called Blumen. This hand sanitizer is a brand with a known methanol contamination that was subsequently recalled and removed from the market. The patient obtained a bottle of Blumen from a dentist office. The patient's arterial blood gases showed pH of 7.09, PCO2 level of 15 mm mercury, and PO2 level of 135 mm mercury. The results of the serum electrolyte tests showed a sodium level of 145 millimol per liter, a chloride level of 106 millimol per liter, and a total CO2 level of less than 5 millimoles per liter. The calculated anion gap was more than 34 millimoles per liter. Based on these test results, it is apparent that the patient is experiencing metabolic acidosis due to a high anion gap with respiratory compensation. However, because the total CO2 level is less than 5, it is challenging to accurately calculate the anion gap and identify any non-anion gap abnormalities. The serum osmolality was measured at 420 milliasmoles per kilogram, but the calculated osmolality based on the levels of sodium, glucose, and urea was only 299 milliasmoles per kilogram, indicating an osmolar gap of 129 milliasmoles per kilogram. This significant osmolar gap along with the elevated anion gap, coupled with the patient's clinical history, strongly suggests possible methanol or ethylene glycol intoxication. Blood tests showed that both ketones and salicylic acid were not detected, and the lactic acid level was normal. The ethanol level was less than 10 and ethylene glycol was not detected. However, the methanol level was elevated at 293 mg per deciliter, corresponding to 91.4 millimoles per liter and accounting for the majority of the osmolar gap, confirming the diagnosis of methanol intoxication. The differential diagnosis of a high anion gap and a large osmolar gap includes ethanol intoxication, methanol ingestion, ethylene glycol ingestion, and propylene glycol infusion. In addition to metabolic acidosis, with a high anion gap, and high osmolar gap, characteristic features for methanol poisoning include the blurred vision that our patient had, or even blindness. Ethylene glycol intoxication is characterized by the presence of urine oxalate or hepuric acid crystals in the urine, and acute kidney injury. While ethanol intoxication may be associated with positive ketones and alcoholic ketoacidosis, Propylene glycol intoxication is associated with lactic acidosis and is usually characterized by the presence of hypotension, acute kidney injury, and multi-organ system failure. Other conditions that can cause metabolic acidosis with high anion gap but a smaller increase in osmolar gap include severe chronic kidney disease without regular dialysis, diabetic ketoacidosis, lactic acidosis, and peraldehyde intoxication. The management of methanol intoxication includes possible intubation and mechanical ventilation, hydration with intravenous crystalloid, and vasopressor support as needed, and the use of bicarbonate, 1 to 2 milli equivalent per kg intravenous bolus followed by infusion if the pH is below 7.3. Alcohol dehydrogenase can be blocked with fomepazole, 15 mg per kilogram as a loading dose, followed by 10 mg per kilogram every 12 hour for four doses. If fomepazole is unavailable or patient has a known allergy, ethanol at 10 ml per kilogram of a 10% ethanol solution, followed by 1 ml per kilogram per hour, can be infused, and should be titrated to serum ethanol concentration of 100 mg per deciliter. In addition, folic acid should be used at a dose of 50 mg every 6 hours. Hemodialysis is indicated in severe toxicity, defined as the presence of metabolic acidosis, regardless of methanol drug level, elevated serum methanol more than 50 mg per deciliter, or evidence of end-organ damage, for example, visual changes. The patient was intubated and placed on mechanical ventilation. 
he was hemodialyzed for a total of 10 hours and started on fomepazole, in addition to intravenous hydration, sodium bicarbonate infusion, and folic acid. He improved and was extubated the following day and made a full recovery with the return of his vision to normal. Thank you for watching. Please visit www.icureach.com for more educational resources.